Hello. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for your time. You're a busy man. <laughs> no, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Bob, um, happy troubles. <laughs> well, uh, Florian, um, the father, uh, the play, I mean, has become uh, a worldwide success. Uh, and in Chile as well, um, uh, when did uh, you decide to adapt the play into a movie? Um, it was not part of the plan, you know. I wrote the play just to, to explore this story that was very important to me. I had some personal connection to it, um, as everyone in a way. But to me, it was it was, it was important. Uh, my grandmother raised me, and, uh, and she started to suffer from dementia when I was 15. And, um, and so it was a way to, to explore this situation, you know, when you, when you are powerless in front of someone you love, and you understand that love is not enough. But I also knew that so many people, unfortunately, can be related to this kind of issue, meaning that everyone has a grandmother, everyone has a father, and everyone has or will have to deal with this painful dilemma. So it was not about telling my own story, it was about sharing emotions. But what happened is that when it was first on stage in France, in Paris, I was not certain that the audience would be open to such an emotional journey. And uh, I was surprised and, and deeply moved to see the response of the audience, meaning that people, it was really powerful to me, meaning that people were waiting for us after every performance, not to say congratulations, but just to tell their own story, to share their own story. And they rea I realized that there was something really cathartic about it. And, um, and it moved me a lot, you know, just to share that moment and to make people remember that, you know, we are all part of something larger, larger than ourselves, you know, and that uh, we can ex experience fraternity, even though it's a painful fraternity. And I think that this is when I made a decision to, to make that film. Well, um, I, I want to ask you if you inspired by personal experience, you, you, you said, but uh, also, uh, while working um, on the movie, especially, did you consult uh, with ne neurologist, uh, psychiatrist? No, 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 no. No, because it was, it's not a scientific work. It's just a, a human exploration. And it's about what it means when you do not know anymore what is real and what is not real. And you don't need to be a psychiatrist or a neurologist to, to know that. It's just to question your heart and your brain what it could mean to lose everything, including your own bearings. Because it's about a man losing his bearings, but I wanted to put the audience in this position. You know, when you are going through a labyrinth, you are questioning everything that you are seeing. You're not sure of what is real, what is not real, as if you were in Anthony's mind, in a way. And it was the whole point of that film. I didn't want the father to be just a story, but I wanted the father to be like an experience, the experience of this, this disorientation, you know, when you do not know anymore if you can trust your perception, your understanding, and your feeling about the situation. So I wanted to tell that story from the inside, you know, not yes. from the outside. And, and, uh, and it was something that was important to me. And, uh, and again, so no need to be a psychiatrist for that. It's pure, uh, you know, instinct. But uh, you described uh, very well this such a problem. I know. <laughs> the movie uh, uh, has suspense. Um, while being fundamentally a family drama, like you said. Uh, what is it originally uh, intended like that? Or, or did that come to life when you start to work on the script? This uh, makes us suspense and drama family. Yeah. 
it's uh, the combinations of several things. Uh, I really wanted to keep the narrative from the play, which is, as I said, to tell the story from the inside. But I had the intuition that the cinema, thanks to its language, could turn this experience into an even more immersive experience. So I wanted to use what the cinema can do and what only the cinema can do to, to create that experience. And, and I wanted that film to start as if it, it was like a thriller in a way at the beginning, as you said, um, because you are in Anthony's shoes, you know, and when you are in your apartment and there is a stranger in your apartment pretending that this is his place, what you feel is anxiety and fear and sometimes rage, you know, and, and um, what was clear to me is that um, I wanted to, to use what could be used uh, through the cinema to play with that feeling of disorientation. And for example, I remember when I wrote the script, I, I drew the layout of the apartment because, uh, you know, as a director, when you're in the studio, you can do whatever you want. You can remove a wall, you can change the proportions, the colors, the pieces of furniture. And I wanted to use those possibilities to, to play with that feeling of disorientation. And to me, the set was like a labyrinth, you know, and I wanted to, this is something that was not possible to do on stage. And you probably noticed that at the beginning we are in Anthony's apartment and, and, and you recognize the space and the way to travel into it. And step by step, you have a, throughout the film, you have some small changes or small metamorphoses on set, such as a piece of furniture are disappear is disappearing or the colors are not the same. So that you recognize where you are and you are familiar with this space. And at the same, same time, you are not quite sure of where you are. And so it was a way to use the set to, as if it was a labyrinth, you know. Uh -huh. uh, you said you always considered Anthony Hopkins for this role. In fact, the character <laughs> is called Anthony. Yeah. Were you as moved, uh, commotioned with uh, his performance? Do you touch with his performance as we were? because uh, his performance is uh, amazing. Yeah, I think during the shooting, we were all moved by what he was doing mm -hmm. because, you know, you're right. The character's name is Anthony. It's just, it, it was not just a game. It was also because I asked him mm -hmm. to be in front of the camera, to be himself in a way. I didn't want him to be protected by a fictional character because I didn't want him to be too aware of the disease or too aware of the story we were telling because I was fearing that it could be like imitating an old man with the disease. I wanted to do something truthful mm. and something impactful. And so that to achieve that, I asked him to just to be in front of the camera, to be Anthony, to be himself uh -huh. and to use his own emotions and to use his own fears and to use his own feeling of mortality to try to to do this and um, it was challenging sometimes it was sometimes even painful because the challenge was to not to do what he's known for but to do something else it, it was to the challenge was to explore a new emotional territory and and to dare going to this very fragile and vulnerable place and for him it was about exploring something he was not familiar with as an actor it was about becoming another actor in a way um, and, and and to me it, it, it had to mirror what families experience in their intimacy you know when you know someone could be your father your mother someone you you love and and you you do not recognize or you see that person that you you know becoming someone else yeah. someone you do not recognize and i wanted that experience to be the same meaning that we all know anthony hopkins we are familiar with him in a way he's part of our family and and we see him becoming someone else becoming another actor and and so he, he had to jump into the unknown as an actor as well. 
And so this is how we start. This is how we worked together. Oh this year, two movies uh, about all age uh, were nominated to the Oscar. Uh, mm -hmm. The Father uh, and the Chilean documentary, The Mole Agent. Uh, the Molina is a different story, a different style, but uh, both have uh, made us think about how lonely the elderly become. Uh, do you think this is a pressing topic in contemporary cinema? Well, what is the the purpose of cinema? Is like a, it's like a mirror where you can watch yourself in order to question who you are and to question the way you live your life and how we see how we do not see all the people i think it's a burning question that we all have to ask especially through this year you know remember last year we all were in that situation where i don't know how it was in your country in france we were in that position where we we were not allowed to come and visit the people that we loved because they were in an institution and and we were all connected to the fragility of life yeah. and and this film is about fragility of life and it's about you know we are alive and it matters and we have to make the most of it yes of course well um I think it's in time. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you so much. It was, it was great to speak with you. Uh, um, I'm really, really uh, agradecida. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank, thank you. Very you. Much.